This is the HBX 16A89A Pro, and it is an awesome 16th scale car, truck, whatever. It has insurmountable durability and pretty decent performance for its size and price. Now, what are some of the flaws of this truck? Well, the short wheelbase causes it to spin out easily. It's not very wide, so it tips over somewhat easily. The battery tray is tiny. The power for its size is there, but I wouldn't complain of a little bit higher top speed. So we're gonna try and find a solution to all of that. Basically, we're gonna take this truck and using parts from other vehicles we are going to turn this into our very own hbx pro franken monster this is the eachine ec30 it usually sits on these black wheels we are going to use the chassis off of this because it is longer plus has a much bigger battery tray this bad boy actually uses a different style drive shaft than this so we're going to have to use this drive shaft we're not going to be able to use these pinions we're going to use quite a few hbx 901a parts and some hbx 2995 parts plus some customization modifications and aftermarket parts i'm going to try to put every single part that i use in the description of this video because what i have pictured up in this thick noggin is awesome and hopefully it works out we're gonna find out do us a huge favor and like this video subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss future stuff let's get started already yes sir first we got to remove the chassis from this vehicle servo can stay for now but i think we are going to upgrade it we have been pretty hard on this car to be honest and there is zero damage on these plastic gears spur gear differential pinions but we are definitely going with metal after a little looking around it looks like this is the only car with a spur gear that will fit the hypergo this is the first generation of course i could use the new hypergo but i don't want to It's nicely into our new chassis. Huh. So this drive shaft is actually too long. Pinion gear needs a setback about uh, three eighths of an inch. That's about nine and a half millimeters, I think. These metal pinions just don't have as deep of a socket for the drive shaft to go into. That's why it's too long. The shorter drive shaft is too short. With the pinion sitting right where it needs to be, the drive shaft doesn't even reach into that socket. Now we'll come back to this problem here in just a minute. We need to try to find us a better front diff pinion. And I was testing it with this hypergo pinion, but I know I have to use the spur gear in the rear pinion from the hyper go but i prefer to use as few gears from this as possible because they just really don't have as high quality metal so that leaves us with the hbx 2995 which another visual examination makes it look like these differentials may fit right in plus hexagon pinion she fits right in and now we gotta pill for the other differential from the 2995 shorten this drive shaft a bit and keep on piecing it together as we go All right, let's see if Captain Safety Pants did a good job. Perfect, just a tiny bit of slop. Now it's time to take a whole bunch of parts off our HBX Pro so we can put them on here. So here you go in the swivelly camera mount. This one's stuck. <clears throat> Transfer over this steering linkage. Now here's where this is really gonna get interesting. Can we fit the 901A suspension onto this? Cause that'll give us a much wider stance, more stability. That means axles and all. Visually looking at it, it seems possible. The 
this bottom skid plate from the 901 will not fit. So we're gonna use the one from the 16A89. Now to see if the 901 arms fit in here. They fit in except for this little nub right there we need to shave off. Here's the difference in drive shaft size, by the way. We're getting thicker and longer. That's what she said. <laughs> Perfect. And looks like I can even use the 901 screws, which are a bit longer than the ones that came on here. No binding. We can attach the wheelie bar completely now. And if we swing this arm up, wow, no trimming required. And again, these were 2995 diffs, so hopefully these axles will work. The wheelie bar's in the way, I forgot. There it is. We gotta get a new one of these here. I'm gonna order one tonight. That's a wide suspension. I love it. The front might get a little more interesting because we have the steering linkages. Hopefully the 901A ones will go on. All right, fast forward a little bit and we're trying to fit the 901 front arms and there's a little bit of a bigger gap. So I think we're gonna have to trim a little bit away from the brace and a little bit away from the front arms. And the upper arms need a little more space here and a little bit shaved off there. By the way, you can even trim this stuff with a razor blade if you need Screws to. Screws are in and everything's moving nicely. Yep, so far it looks like the 901A tie rods are going to swap right over. The only thing is you need a longer screw. The screws that hold the wheelie bar or the bumper to the front and rear differential are the perfect size. The springs on the 16A89 shocks are a little bit too soft and weak. The 901A uses the same shocks, but has stronger, stiffer springs. And we're gonna put 100 weight fluid in them. Then we need to match the whole size of these 901A control arms onto the new shock tower. Cause I'm gonna use the shock screws from the 901A, which are quite a bit larger. Now we're just gonna do that to the rest of these. So does the motor from the 901A fit? But it's the same diameter, 28 millimeter. But it's also a little bit longer. So this motor from the 901 has a 12 tooth pinion on it. So here I'm replacing that 12 tooth pinion with the 14 tooth pinion that comes on the 16A89. But this mount does give you the choice to use a 16 tooth even though it came with a 14. But I am gonna run some bigger tires on this and I don't want it to cog if I can help it. So I'm gonna stick with the 14 tooth. That mesh feels good. You wanna make sure there's at least a little click sound between the teeth. I mean, that 901A scoots pretty good. So now we've got that motor in a smaller, hopefully slightly lighter weight car and with a slightly bigger pinion. I don't think this is gonna be lacking in power. Boop. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and use the 901A ESC because I know it works. And that way I don't even have to replace the controller. A little shoe goo to keep it down and a little help to keep it in place while it dries. Okay, it is game day. We are going to start with the stock tires. Then we're going to move over to these guys, which are significantly larger. Then we're going to go with these, which are kind of in between. I believe these are going to be the best for drifting. These are going to be the best for stunts. And hopefully these will fall right in the middle with the best overall control. And here's a quick visual of the battery tray difference. So here's the original chassis. And about the biggest battery you can fit in there is this little 1000 milliamp deal no room to expand because the servo goes right there the new chassis you put the original battery in and you still have all kinds of room so many more options like the batteries that come with the 12 scale hbx's they fit in there perfectly 1600 milliamps or even this gins ace bashing battery which is a 2200 milliamp for these initial test drives we're going to use the original hbx pro body but for our final test we have a different body we're going to put on it I do not think we're gonna have any problems with stability. It's gonna bottom out pretty easily, so that's why we're also gonna check those other tires. There's full throttle on clumpy grass. <laughs> Took that curb like it was nothing. Whoa. Any chance of a backflip? No, no backflip. Oh, how about a front flip? The longer wheelbase and obviously the wider stance do give it such better control on the ground, but not much air control. So now we're gonna put these oversized tires on it. This one wheelies. Ooh. You all are 
right in the landing zone here. See that? So these were awesome too, just in their own different way. You can actually do stunts off the ramp, front flips and back flips, and it holds a pretty perfect wheelie for a good distance. If you don't feather it, it'll just flip right over because these have really good grip. Even with that wide stance, it can still flip over with these because the tires just grab the ground. Plus it took quite a few pretty nasty tumbles and nothing's broken. But we do have a screw backing out of the bottom of the rear shock. Now we're gonna get to the final product of this project. We're gonna start out by putting these monster truck tires that are from the HBX 903. Now for the body. To change things up, I went with the darker themed body. So first off, since it's a longer wheelbase, I switched the front and rear body posts. So I also have to ream us a couple new front holes here, line up the rear body posts, and then mark how far forward the front ones have to be. Now that we have those perfectly lined up and ready, I'm gonna use some of these body mount donuts that I got from Dragon Grip. They go on the inside, outside, or both of your body post holes to help keep your body protected. Not only that, but they were nice enough to send me some channel stickers as well. Plus more of their grip technology that is sticky on one side and grippy on the other so that you can put it on things like the trigger, the handle, the steering wheel, or literally anything else you can think of. Now we're about ready to take this thing out for a rip and man that looks so awesome i think super happy with how it turned out it is like super windy look at this we got a new package from the netherlands that's really far away don't worry it's been x-ray checked that's for another video Test. Tracking straight as can be, 27.4. See if we get anything better. 28 miles an hour. Ooh. In the tree. Oh, and she's down. Oof. All those concrete slammies damaged this motor lead, got it fixed. Well, that's all she wrote. We broke a front axle stub from the 901A axle. We spent two whole battery packs on the concrete and then broke it in the grass on the third jump. Much to talk about other than the broken axle. We put this thing through a whole lot and I'm super pleased with it. It's got great ground control, not only because of how wide it is, but also because the steering servo that the EC30 comes with, that longer chassis car, is actually slightly larger and it is more powerful. I thought these were gonna end up being my favorite tires on this whole project thing, but I don't think they were. The stock HBX tires were really, really good for ground, drifting around. Even the few jumps we did gave it a smoother landing than those did. Now, besides drifting, these were the best. The larger tires aren't good for drifting anyway, but these have grippier rubber. And they were really good for the jumps, the stunts, the air controls, and the wheelies. So I'm curious to know which tires you like the best. So those Dragon Grip Donuts helped prevent any type of damage or cracks around the body holes. We got over 20 minutes 
with this battery. And that was full throttle, drifting, jumping the whole time. The car got almost no rest. I would like to see a better ESC so that this can go on 3S because that ESC does not work well with 3S. I'm not really sure if I like the darker body over the orange one, but also for safety reasons, this one has a fire extinguisher. So anyone that's thinking about doing something like this or an iteration of it, you could reuse the 16th scale arms and axles and just get you a longer wheelbase out of it. I think that alone would add a lot to the stock car, but I'm also a fan of wide suspension. Of course, you have a lot more space to go with a wider body if you wanted to. The biggest weakness on this right now is the suspension. If I can find some shocks that run from here and go all the way to this outer mount hole, I think that would probably help quite a bit. I'm gonna mess around with this thing some more, try different shocks, maybe different tires. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. It seems a lot of you miss out on some videos because you're not getting notified. And let me know what you thought of this build. Was it cool? Was it dumb? Much appreciated and we will see you very soon.